Hi, let me show you how ZoomPlayer's new modern UI works and how you can customize it. So basically, uh, this is the advanced options dialog and I'm on the control overlay section. And here is the screenshot so I can show you in real time uh, what each section I'm referring to looks like on screen. So basically, we have the system buttons first. And these are the four buttons currently here. And these are our current buttons. And these are the available functions we can assign to this button region. So basically, all you need to do is like uh, press uh, the select uh, one of the functions and then move it over. And you can sort it any way you like. And if you don't like it, you can just uh, select one or more entries and clear them out. Okay, so this is the system area and this is the three title buttons. Okay, I limited it to three and these are the buttons that appear here to the left of the title area. Okay, and you, for each uh, of the button areas, you can you have the same functions you can assign. There's quite a lot of them, as you can see. And so the next are the fixed buttons. There's a seven maximum, and these are the central buttons here that appear always appear centered within the user interface. And next we have the fixed. Oh. So sorry, this was the fixed. And next we have the dynamic buttons. These are the buttons here. And by dynamic, I mean that they show up if there's room to show them. We can't have buttons on top of buttons. So if there's no room, these buttons disappear one by one as they get uh, closer to the fixed buttons. Okay, this is why the list is ordered in, uh, is sort of in sort of a reverse uh, order. Well, the first item in the list here is the first item on the right, not the, the left, as you would expect usually. And this is because the most important items are on top and they disappear last. Okay, next we have the size configuration and a little bit of visuals. So we have the title area. This uh, setting controls this and the size of this entire block so it's uh, the text size along with the button sizes for the title area and next we have button spacing this is the spacing between each of the buttons you can make them more crowded and have more buttons show up or you can make them more sparse and uh, easier to click uh then you have the side margins this is the distance between the uh, side of the video and the start of our interface on either side it's symmetrical and then we have vertical margins these are the margin between elements so the spacing between the edge and this the, the this area and then between this area and the timeline uh, that's controlled by the vertical margins. This is the fixed buttons, these buttons, the size of them. So you can have them different sizes depending on your display, distance from the, from the TV, whatever. Uh, same for the dynamic buttons, the buttons here. And this is the size of the timeline bar. This is a timeline bar. And this setting controls the size. Next, you have uh, the timeline font. The, this is the timeline font. So here you can control the size. Uh, chapters not visible. This, this is basically like tick marks on the timeline wherever there are chapters. So you can control their width. And here you can control the mouse cursor that appears when you hover over the timeline to make it easier for, for you to know that you can seek in that area. And the default option is the hand pointer, you know, it's just the, the regular arrow. And classic uh, is from the previous version of Zoom Player. 
if you are a fan of the classic mode, you can switch to that. Uh, the same here, you can control the volume bar. This is the volume bar and you can control uh, the height uh, and you can control the width of the volume bar. Okay, the bar widgets, currently we only have one visible for the volume bar. This is a little circle here and you, you can optionally add one here, but it's not uh, enabled by default. Uh, I don't think it's really required, but for the volume it's easier. And here you can control uh, the widget size. The size is relative to the bar size. So it, it grows with the bar size automatically, but if you want an even larger widget, you can control it through here. Uh, okay, these are the bars. We have two bars here. We have the timeline bar and the volume bar. And here you can control the corner radius. You can, right now it's fully circular, but you can make it uh, a little bit uh, 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 more squarish or have no corner corners at all, complete square. Okay, next we go to the color section, the colors and opacity section. Okay, so the background color is uh, basically you can see it a little bit behind uh, the title area and behind the controls. It's a grad, uh, it's a darkening the area to give the controls enough contrast contrast to be uh, visible against uh, a bright background. For example, if we had a, a fully white image and we didn't have the, the background color, it uh, uh, everything would just uh, disappear because it's white on white. And uh, the color is basically, it's like a box that ends around the text and there's a little bit of gradient so you don't really even notice it. So it just merges into the video in a smoother way. And so, okay, so here you can control the background color, which is black and it's 32% uh, opacity, which means that it's 68% uh, transparent. Okay, so we only see 32% of the black, which means 68% uh, of the background is visible. And we have the same thing for the title font, this font, and you can control opacity. For each of these elements, you can call, control the opacity. So I'll just go element by element. So you have the title font I just showed you. You have the timeline font, which is here above the timeline. Uh, you have the time, timeline active color. Here it's white, but uh, uh, it can be any color you want. The default color is blue with actually 50% transparency. Uh, we have the inactive timeline, which is this section here. As you can see, it's very, it's, uh, it's, a li it's very dark gray and it's quite transparent. Uh, here is when, uh, when displaying chapters or bookmarks, uh, these are uh, the colors that appear on the timeline for the uh, chapter areas, chapter, chapter points. And you have the color for the volume bar here for both uh, the active and inactive areas. And finally, you have the button highlight color, which you can't really see right now, but basically it's a color that appears when you hover uh, over with the mouse. It's barely visible because it's sort of uh, an, uh, an overlay on top of an overlay. So even when it's barely visible, it's actually quite visible on screen. Uh, and let's continue to the settings. Okay, so this setting uh, that automatically show the control overlay on mouse movement, basically wh wherever, whenever you move with the mouse cursor, over the interface, the control overlay pops up and allows you to move the window uh, or uh, press any of the, the controls. And there's an option that uh, monitors if the mouse, uh, uh, this option, even when the, another app has focus, uh, means that if you were working on another application and then you hover with the mouse, over Zoom Player application, even though it doesn't have uh, uh, focus, it will pop forward on top of the other application and take focus and show the overlay. So you uh, allow you to control uh, Zoom Player even if it doesn't have the focus because 
just hovering over the mouse. If Zoom player doesn't have focus, it doesn't receive any mouse events. So it doesn't show the overlay automatically like that. Okay, next you have the show uh, overlay when moving the mouse cursor to the bottom of uh, the screen. This is when you, if you don't want it to show automatically, you can uh, uh, disable this option, enable this option. And then when you drag the mouse cursor to the bottom of the screen, it will pop the overlay. Uh, you can have the same thing for the top. And this setting, uh, seeking functions show the control overlay, uh, basically pop the control overlay when you're seeking forward or backward a specified number of seconds um uh, like here when you jump forward uh, 20 seconds but if you do it with, with a keyboard or remote uh, or maybe a mouse action so it pops the overlay to, so you can uh, see the timeline where you are uh same thing for pausing it's always uh, useful if you pause the video to just pop up and you can see where you are uh, if you use the rewind or uh, fast forward functions, uh, so you can see the timeline uh, as it's moving along. Uh, when you open a new uh, media, a link or a file. Uh, and here you can control the automatically hide the control uh, overlay on idle. Uh, it's how many seconds when you don't move the mouse or click on the control. Uh, until the uh, uh, control over the interface hides automatically. Uh, and you can uh, set it so uh, it's only, it only hides automatically when you're playing something, so it doesn't hide when you're posed, uh, so it stays on screen. Um, this setting automatically hides the control overlay when clicking the video area is very simple. If you just click somewhere here, uh, uh, and the control overlay is visible, it will just first hide the control overlay and then uh, if you click again, it will use the regular function like play pause. Uh, okay. Now here are the elements. You can hide pretty much every element. Uh, so if you, don't, if you uh, uncheck this, the show title text, this text will not appear anymore. If you unclick show fixed buttons, these buttons will disappear. If you uh, unclick the dynamic buttons, these, the buttons will disappear. The pre-title buttons are here, and the system buttons are here, and we can even hide the uh, volume bar and uh, the mute, the volume level and mute uh, icon, slash button. And you can hide, here you can choose, ah, okay. So uh, w if you hide all the elements in this area, then the timeline area will drop down uh, to fill the space. So you can have uh, more uh, screen real estate. Okay, uh, for both these bars, the timeline bar and the volume bar, you can show whether to show uh, the widget. Okay, uh, you don't have to grab the widget, you can click anywhere, it's just, uh, a visual indicator that people are used to. Okay, and finally, you can de decide whether to show actually show uh, timeline chapters or bookmarks on the on the timeline. So, if your med media has some chapters, you can choose whether to show them or not. Up to you. And finally, uh, we have there's just so many settings and layouts and buttons. So I made it uh, easy to reset the settings. So here you can uh, apply the default settings. The, these are the settings, or all of these, all the checkboxes. Uh, and here, uh, when clicking this, it resets all the design sections, which is the colors and the sizes. Uh, he, if you click this button, uh, it resets uh, all the button layouts. And if you click this button, it resets all the button layouts, but uh, uh, for use uh, as an IPTV player, which is uh, a slightly different button layout. And that's it. I hope this video has been informative. Check out Zoom Player at our website, www.inmatrix.com. And have a good day.